Thank you, Dean Hutter, faculty, graduates, and loved ones, members of the Dean's Advisory Board, honored guests, my family and friends, many of who are BU alumni and supporters as well. I can't control the weather, so I'm very sorry it's warm in here, but we'll do the best we can. I am truly honored to have this opportunity to address this amazing group of new colleagues. I feel as if I have a kinship with you. I have seen you in the hallways, I have mentored some of you, and taught most of you at some point or another. I have to confess that when Dean Hutter first asked me to be the keynote speaker, it took me almost a minute to make sure that I hadn't misheard. I thought to myself, did he call me by mistake? The silence on my end of the phone must have been a lengthy one because then he said, Mina, are you still there? I was so incredibly flattered and unbelievably honored to have this opportunity to address you that for a minute, I lost my voice. Later, as I thought about my own graduation from dental school, I realized I couldn't remember my keynote speaker, which scared me. But I also realized that like today, graduation is a snapshot in time. There is only so much you can remember from this momentous day. Plus, this speaker, like me, was the only thing standing between the diploma and a glass of champagne. So please indulge me because I feel blessed as to have a chance to speak with you, briefly I promise, as I do feel a kinship with you and have so much admiration for you as a class and your generation. Class of 2016, today is your day. Savor this moment. You have earned the right to graduate from a stellar school, one that is led by a visionary dean who works hard day and night. He really does devote 24 hours a day because he is so passionate about ensuring that the Boston University Goldman School of Dental Medicine is the number one school, not only in Boston, not only in the nation, but in the world. In addition to having a brilliant and devoted dean, you also have the advantage of being educated and supported by amazingly talented faculty who truly care about your success. I know I speak the truth because I know them well as neighbors and friends. Your accomplishments are their accomplishments. This group of dedicated teachers who take so much pride in what you have accomplished will continue to be there for you throughout your career as colleagues and friends, so let's give them a round of applause. Part of what makes this faculty so special is the passion that they have for their profession. Without this passion, you would not have been the recipients of the high level of education and been infused with the desire to learn and excel in your field as you go forward today. I had the benefit of a similar experience when I was a senior in high school. Mr. Fritzinger was my history teacher. Class would start as he would walk into the room and go straight to the center. He would stand on the balls of his feet and fix us all with a beady stare. And then he would launch into the immense story of the Civil War. As seniors, we could not imagine a more boring subject, especially in the springtime. But then something would shift. He would wave his hands, and as he spoke about war and battle positions and muskets and rifles, you could feel the energy and passion in the room grow, and you could feel that there was a gleam in his eyes that you hadn't seen before. And all of a sudden, we would forget about our haste to get outside because we just wanted to sit there and keep hearing more. As Mr. Fritzinger's high school student, I learned to be excited by what I was learning regardless of the subject matter and was grateful for that. But the day I was talking to a dental student and sharing facts about dentistry was the day I fully realized what passion and fulfillment feels like. Because I know I had a gleam in my eyes and I think I might have waved my hands around a bit when I spoke as well. And I realized how lucky I was. Fulfillment in life is key. Make sure you remember that. You have dedicated yourselves to hard work these last few years and probably made a lot of sacrifices to achieve what you have. 
and perhaps you feel fulfilled. For me, fulfillment was about what came later in life. My husband and my three beautiful children, my extended family and friends, and most importantly, my quite diverse journey into my profession. I realized that the range of my experiences in my professional journey came as a result of taking risks, of listening to my gut. When I first came to Boston, I did not know a single soul. I came into a city with three dental schools and no network or support. I was desperate for a job, and while I was teaching part-time, someone told me about a job in a community health center. I did not know anything about public health, neither did I think I was qualified, and it did not seem like sexy dentistry to the hotshot I considered myself to be after my hardcore hospital residency. But I needed a job, and I took a risk and applied. I know when I went to my interview that I walked into the doors of the Greater Rosendale Medical and Dental Center, I felt as if I was coming home. And when they offered the job to me as an associate, I went with my gut and I took it. That is where I discovered my passion for the geriatric and the medically compromised and started to realize my fulfillment as I discovered and delivered care for this patient population. This passion led me to BU, where I completed a geriatric fellowships and a master's in public health. And that's where I developed another passion, a passion for the success of this fine institution. Watching you learn and watching the school grow has made me aware of how important it is to give back to make sure that this fine institution gets all the support it needs to continue to grow and excel in the nation and the world. A few years later, I took another risk and responded to an advertisement that was seeking applicants for the members of the Board of Registration in Dentistry here in Massachusetts. The board is the all-seeing body in the state and defines and supervises the practice of dentistry. I looked at the advertisement. I certainly did not feel qualified to be a member, and it seemed scary to want to be part of such a powerful and seasoned group that were so much more experienced than myself. So I talked myself out of it. After all, I was just a nine to five dentist and a mom. And I didn't know any influential people, nor did I think I was very special. I ignored it for a while and it sat there on my desk, but I couldn't let it go and my gut said, you will regret it if you don't at least try. So I filled out the application and sent in my CV and I did not hear back and I wasn't very surprised. And that was that. One year later, I received a letter of appointment from the governor and I entered into an eye-opening 10-year experience of dealing with offenders of all types. From the dentist who made an innocent or unintentional mistake to those who had done such a range of multiple egregious acts that I could not imagine ever doing or even knew they were possible. These were members of our profession. I realized there is no excuse in our profession for ignorance. It is not okay to say, I did not know I was not supposed to release the original health records, or I did not know my license had expired six months ago, or no one told me I was supposed to be sport testing the autoclave weekly, or that it was my responsibility to check that my instruments were sterile before I used them on a patient. You all know that just by virtue of graduating from this dental school. From their mistakes, I learned how proud I am of who we are as dentists and how important it is to preserve the integrity of our profession and to strengthen our ethics every day and keep our compassion even in the face of adverse conditions. The biggest lesson I learned is that we are our own regulators and are held to that standard. We are unusual. Our profession is unusual. Every day, we are trusted by our own patients to critique our own work and uphold a standard of care which no one ever checks. That is scary and a huge responsibility. 
and very unusual among all professions. My 10 years of serving on the board opened up the world of dentistry for me. It taught me to be a leader and realize how multifaceted our profession really is. I learned an immense amount about the regulatory process, the value of expressing my voice, and along the way also realized how important it was to share my experience with younger dentists. And so I discovered another passion, that of mentoring. Everybody needs a mentor. Sometimes, as a mentor, we just need to be there for support and to be a guide or a sounding board, a cheerleader, even a matchmaker. And sometimes we need to be much more. We need to be there to encourage the risk-taking, the following of the gut. Recently, a young colleague of mine was at a crossroads in her career. She was not happy where she was, but she could not identify what she wanted next. I knew she loved to travel, so I suggested a mission trip to Honduras. Through some contacts, I discovered an opportunity which I thought might suit her. When I shared this information, she declined to even consider it at first. She was hesitant to apply for a number of reasons, not to mention the cost and taking the time off. A few days later, she texted me to tell me she had reconsidered, and all of a sudden, the conversation changed from why the opportunity would not suit her to how it could suit her and how she was excited and nervous to try. She came back from her trip with a million stories, a glow on her face, and a decision to take the following year off to travel to third world countries and do more mission work. She studied Spanish in Guatemala, did mission work in Honduras and Bolivia, hiked the Camino in Spain, taught at a dental school in Laos, and ended up in China where she did more mission work. She had found her passion. To see her find her passion gave me a sense of fulfillment. We all have something to offer. We all have the ability to mentor. You as graduates will be seeking mentors and also will be sought as mentors. At this point, you may not think of yourself at the cachet of information that you have will be beneficial to someone, but believe it or not, it will. So don't hesitate to reach out to us, your colleagues, as well as your future colleagues, for mentoring and being mentored. Our profession is on the cusp, pardon the expression, of growth in so many ways. There are so many avenues you can take and participate in, whether it be academia, clinical, administrative, regulatory, or organized dentistry. The more you participate in these areas, the more you will experience the full breadth of our profession. And experiencing this full breadth is fulfillment. I have great faith in your generation and have immense respect for the traits you possess. As millennials, here is what I know about you. You are great at multitasking. You have grown up with the World Wide Web at your fingertips, so you have a global view and an immediate access to knowledge. You are entrepreneurial and are risk takers. I could not think of better traits for a guardian of my profession. As guardians, do not forget who will be following in your footsteps and that it is your duty as responsibility as graduates of this fine institution to remember your alma mater. You are guardians. Our profession, it is your obligation to ensure that you leave it to the next generation on the positive track, continuing to gain momentum as it is now for us. You have a duty to have a voice in the direction it goes. And as one of those who have helped to preserve this profession for you, I say, Today, you are our guardians. Embrace the breath of all you have to offer and all this great profession has to offer, and you will find passion and fulfillment. As you walk out of the arena today as guardians of this great profession, which is ranked number one in this country, remember, no matter what others say, oral health is not a luxury. 
It is a necessity, and we do save lives. Can't thank you, and congratulations, class of 2016.